How can we locate the epicenter of an earthquake knowing only the difference in the arrival times of the S and the P wave? So let's say that we have this setup right here. Let's say that we have two seismic stations, uh, station A and station B, and they're separated by 2,000 kilometers. Station A reports a difference in the arrival time uh, between the S and the P wave of 60 seconds, and station B reports this difference to be 240 seconds. Uh, so knowing this information, how can we locate the epicenter of the earthquake? Well, let's come over here to this graph here. I've plotted uh, a line describing the S wave and a line describing the P wave. Uh, the x-axis is the distance from the epicenter, and the y-axis is the arrival time. So let's see, uh, let's see if we can't relate the x and the y-axis uh, through some equation, uh, and then work on solving our problem here. So the equation of a line, of course, is y equals mx plus b. And because uh, our y-intercept here is just 0, uh, we can drop the b. Uh, that's, again, just 0. So we know y. Uh, y is, is the arrival time. Uh, x is, is the distance from the epicenter. So we need to find what m is, or the slope of the line. Well, remember, slope is just rise over run. Our rise, uh, the change in the y-axis, uh, is the arrival time. And the run, the change in the x-axis, uh, is the distance from the epicenter. So we can say that m, uh, just writing out our units here, is time over distance, which is units of inverse velocity. Because remember, velocity is distance divided by time. OK, so we could rewrite this equation to be 1 over velocity d. OK, so we can now specialize this general equation for our S and P wave. So Ts equals uh, 1 over Vs times the distance, and Tp equals 1 over Vp times the distance. And the difference between these two equations will give us what we're interested here uh, in here, uh, or what we're given, I should say, which is the difference in the arrival times. So let's just go ahead and say that Ts minus Tp equals, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and simplify this on the fly, 1 over Vs minus 1 over Vp times d. All right, so this is the equation that describes what's being observed at station A and station B. OK, so we're interested in finding the distance uh, to the epicenter. So now we need to rearrange this equation uh, to solve for d. And so uh, if you go ahead and, and do all of the arithmetic, what you should end up with is d equals um, t s minus t p uh, v p v s over v p minus v s. This is the equation that describes the distance uh, between the station and the epicenter of the earthquake. OK. So we know T s minus T p. It's given to us from the stations. So what we need to know is uh, the velocity of the P wave and the velocity of the S wave. Uh, and so we know from experimental study uh, that P waves generally travel through the Earth at about 5 kilometers per second, and S waves uh, do so at 3 kilometers per second. So now we have all the information we need to know to find how far away the earthquake was uh, from station A and how far away it was from station B. So dA equals, and we're just using this equation down here, uh, 60 seconds times 5 kilometers per second times 3 kilometers per second over 5 minus 3. And this should give us, and I have to come over here to my notes quickly, uh, 450 kilometers is the solution to this. All 
All right, we're running out of room here. All right, and uh, so we could do the same thing for B down here. Uh, 240 seconds times five kilometers per second times three kilometers per second divided by five minus three kilometers per second. And the answer is 1,800 kilometers. So knowing only the uh, difference in the travel time between the S and the P wave at these two stations and their average velocities uh, that we observe uh, in the Earth, we've calculated the distance of the epicenter. Now it's worth noting that uh, this uh, could be anywhere within 360 degrees um, in a 2D plane uh, 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 within uh, station A and station B. So otherwise, uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, we know how far away the earthquake is, but we don't know exactly in which direction it came from. So how could you uh, whittle this down to maybe say something about the direction of the earthquake? Well, I won't do it here, but I'll give you an answer. Let's say we plot station, let's say station B, oh, sorry, station A is here and station B is here. Well, we could just draw a general circle around each station where the radius of the circle are the distances that we just found. And the circles intersect at two points, here and here. So now we have two possible locations uh, for describing the location of the earthquake. It could either be here or it could be here. Uh, and what you would need in order to decide which is a third station, uh, which brings us to uh, earthquake triangulation. But that's a video for a different time. Uh, so that's it for this, and I will see you next time.